You ready? Uh, this is going to the first one. Yep. Right, so we've got blank slides open. I should tell you now, and I spouted some keywords at Andy whilst I was doing some developing and developing the challenge. Andy turned that into a petrol picture, and now I'm going to present it having barely seen the slides. So this could be quite exciting. We have a blank slide to start with because we didn't manage to get a picture of me and Andy in there. Um, we've been doing some work at the University of Town, and it's that news. Um, Surely that's 20 seconds. Ah, here we are. Right, yes. Uh, so, probably all of your, you work at universities, probably all of those universities have a communications department, um, and probably all of you have a badly organised communications department. The University of Southampton certainly does. Um, now, um, the communications department is in charge of uh, managing the institution's presence in the wider community, um, and the institution, that's obviously very important because that will get students in. And students is what makes us the money. So um, it's very important that our communication with the wider world is good. And a large part of our communication is communicating what we do. Now, what we do is this uh, research. These are the people, they're what does it. They make articles, they write blog posts, they're doing all this stuff. And one thing that actually these guys get a lot better at over the last sort of, 10, 15 years, um, probably even longer than that, but I'm not old enough to know. Um, is they get a lot better at telling people about it because you know you've got a multi-skilled researcher now. You've got a researcher who does teaching, it does it writes journal papers, it does blogging, it comes to events. It's it's all purpose. It's one researcher to all and all. Um, but sadly, the communications department of your university uh, is not quite so not quite so lucky. It's not got the multi-skilled. In fact, it doesn't really have any tools at all, as far as I can tell, for monitoring what people of this institute actually bloody do which is a little bit of a shame really because it's really not that difficult. So, we thought to aid our communications department, um, what we do is, I'm not going down the right line, I don't know what's coming next, um, <laughs> is we write a tool to help the um, institution get a handle on what it is that people remotely to it were actually doing, it. well, I say remotely, internally, but outside of the communications department we're doing. A little bit less navel gazing, a little more looking at what's around us. Um, <laughs> And this is where it becomes obvious, I haven't really seen the slides. Um, okay, so yeah, this is all about building the brand and improving the brand. So if you can harness the news and know about what you're going to be doing around your campus, then you can cherry pick from that the things which you think are important. What goes on the front page of my news website, what goes in my news feeds, um, what things it's worth shouting about when I send my envelope to events. So a little web spider which goes over a university website domain and harvests all the news feeds that we can find, so Atom and RSS and that sort of thing. And it puts them into a database, and then we go through all the items in that database and generate keywords. Um, so, um, so we do what's called term frequency, inverse document frequency. I like saying that because it sounds important. Um, which basically says, well, this post has this many words in it, all the posts have this word occurring in this percentage of times, so this word occurs a lot proportionally in this post, so this post must be about that. Um, so once we know what things are about, we then have to worry about hotness. So we very well know this is very about the semantic web, but if it's very about the semantic web from three years ago, we don't actually care anymore, or not as much as we certainly did. Um, so we've got a hotness metric which rates how old something is and uses that to benchmark against how relevant it is to give you things that you care about. What this enables us to do is if you personalise the news. So you can give it some keywords of things that you're interested in, it can give you things which are current and relevant to your interests. Now, I don't remember what the next slide is, so I've no idea where I'm going. <laughs> we'll carry on. Um, ah, yes, uh, so the point is that there's engagement at multiple levels. So we're not just, we are, you know, you've got the, the at the desk experience, as you will. Um, but this isn't the only thing, the only place you can engage with research, country for popular belief, because there's the new sort of, come on, personalised news feeds that we talked about a little bit, bring to personalised magazine articles, there we go, fantastic. Um, and so this is, you wake up in the morning, you check, you, know, you check your emails, and you open your iPad and you look at your personalised magazine to find out what research is new and hot in your area. Um, so that's pretty cool on a personal level, but... The, we can also deliver you news. It is this the thing about? Yeah, okay. We can also deliver you news at multiple levels. So we can give you news at a personal level. So news that's personal to you. 
we can give you this, you can use it at institutional level. So use it's interesting to your institution, so for your comms department. And we can give you the wider spectrum of views at a national level. And we can give you more information with that. So the information we can give you is and we've got loads of stuff about information. So yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, we won't rush in there. Um, <laughs> so we give you more information, we give you value added. Uh, we can tell you about your own news. And that's actually quite an important thing. So we can tell you where it is. Um, and we can tell you um, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Ah yes, right, so this is about the sources of your news. So we can tell you where your news is. So this is really handy if you're a, a comms department, because you need to know. And we can tell you, presumably, how it is linked, um, what the themes of your news are. So we can tell you what your, like, so if we had to pick something that your university was about, we know what the keywords are, we know what keywords you've got that are commonly occurring. So this is like the trends in your news. There's a lot of people over in, in your campus that are talking about semantic web. Uh, and we can tell you about the speed, we can tell you how fast it's changing, um, you know, how much your research is actually engaging with this, how much they're blogging, um, how much they're publishing. Um, bear in mind that your repositories will generate RSS feeds for anyone who wasn't familiar. Um, and I can't remember where I was going with this. Uh, go on, next word. Thank you, Oh, future work, right, yeah, so the last thing that's remaining to do, thank God, <laughs> is. <laughs> is to improve this so that we can A, expand it to cover more of the stuff, B, do some automatically generated things, so we know what you publish about, because you're a person who's blogging on your campus, can we recommend you news that's relevant to that? And okay, that's 